Good morning. Today is May 1st, 2020, and this is The Morning Breach with Scott Davis. Targeted phishing attack successfully hacked at least 156 high-ranking officers at various firms based in Germany, the United Kingdoms, Netherlands, Hong Kong, and Singapore over the last few months. Dubbed Persuasion, the newly spotted cyber attack campaign leveraged Microsoft Sway, SharePoint, and OneNote to launch targeted phishing attacks. Once compromised, attackers immediately downloaded victims' email data using IMAP and then impersonated their identities and targeted those with recent communication to the victim, while deleting impersonating emails from the sent items. Evidence indicates the scammers are using LinkedIn profiles to assess potential targets. Targeted phishing attacks are not new, and this comes at a time it's really required for every organization to look at and offer cybersecurity training for their end users, including members of the leadership. Cybersecurity training is required for HIPAA, PCI DSS. Uh, it's required for a number of state compliance, um, state compliance laws. It's required for a number of industry compliances. So cybersecurity training is absolutely something you should be offering. And if your organization is not offering cybersecurity training, then you are leaving the most vulnerable, weakest link of your organization at risk. Canada's Northwest Territories Power Corporation, or NTPC, suffered a cyber attack on Thursday from the NetWalker ransomware. NTPC, as a precautionary measure, has shut down its systems, including email, until it can confirm whether data has been compromised. NetWalker campaign operators have primarily been targeting hospitals and healthcare providers via phishing emails <coughs> that include a .vps attachment, but have also compromised networks using misconfigured IIS-based applications for entry. On average, victim organizations suffer 15 days of downtime after a ransomware attack, not just NetWalker, any ransomware attack. Oracle is warning users of its WebLogic servers that a security bug that was patched mid-April is now being exploited in the wild as a proof of concept code has appeared on GitHub. CVE 2020-2883 does not require any user authentication or interaction to exploit. So if you or any of your clients are utilizing WebLogic it's time to complete a patch of that system and get that updated. One thing I'd like to do every Friday moving forward is to briefly discuss a section of documentation that your organization should have and maintain as part of a technology documentation plan. Uh, for today, I wanna to start with the basics and just discuss workstation creation and refreshes. <coughs> Excuse me, workstations are typically the most replaced or repurposed equipment within your infrastructure. And because of how heavily they're used and how often they are replaced or repurposed, it is essential that your organization has a plan on how to handle the, you know, deploying a new or repurposing after somebody has left the company or when a senior member of the team gets a new computer and the computer they were using is still powerful enough to work and gets handed to somebody else in the organization. So some important notes for your document uh, for new systems, you should always start with a hardware check. A uh, hardware check is you know, the health check of what's inside, you know, the nuts and bolts of the computer, if you will. <coughs> oh, excuse me again. That hardware check um, is you know, the equivalent of making sure that when the user gets the computer, that it's going to work. Uh, you wouldn't want to set buy a car and then find out that the windshield wipers or the battery needed replaced. It's the same thing with computers. You should update BIOS and hardware drivers. Your BIOS and hardware drivers are typically things that IT professionals will not automatically update or approve for, you know, patching. And the reason being is typically, unless there is a major security you know, reason, it typically can cause more harm than good by patching them, you know, without hands-on. So for the most part, 
do that BIOS and hardware drivers when you are setting up that new computer and make sure that everything is fully patched and on the latest version. Outline default setup. Um, so, you know, what is your default setup? You know, you should never use a standard administrator username and password for every workstation. Uh, I believe it was the first week that I started doing these videos. One of the tips that I gave was along the lines of not using the same username and password for every workstation. Because when someone is hacking your system or someone compromises your system or they discover what that username and password is by unlocking the hash key, they then know the username and password of every workstation. So once they have access to one workstation, they now have access to every every workstation in your organization. It should just be assumed, but make sure encryption is enabled. It's absolutely, absolutely a must if it's a laptop computer, but enable encryption on your computers. Uh, if it's stolen, if it's lost, if it's encrypted, it's not breachable unless the encryption key is, you know, or the password is, you know, post-it noted to the bottom of the laptop or something. Uh, but enable encryption. <coughs> Ensure all your Windows updates are completed. The last thing you want to do is give the computer to an end user and have Windows updates that need to be done. So just patch the system, get it fully updated, have it in a good state ready to go. So when that employee starts day one, the computer's there and ready to go. Outline your standard applications all users get and the associated license keys for it. It's amazing the amount of organizations, companies, small businesses, nonprofits that I've onboarded that they give me a list of their applications and they have no idea what their license keys are. You need to keep track of your license keys. You need to keep track of what applications users are using and what applications all users are using. Create a list of documented SOPs. SOPs are standard operating procedures that should be followed for applications and services. With a refresh system, a refresh system is that system that, you know, hey, your IT professional, you know, got a new computer last year, but his computer was spec'd really nice, and we're going to hand that system off to another user. I always recommend starting with a hardware check. The last thing you want to do is give someone a hand-me-down computer that has a bad component, that has something wrong with it. If you're utilizing a ticketing system and you're able to track, you know, support tickets based on workstation, do that as well and see what types of issues are routine with that workstation or user. Update the BIOS and hardware. Like I said earlier with the new system, chances are your BIOS and hardware drivers have not been updated since you deployed the system. So now is a perfect time to update BIOS, update your hardware, update the drivers. Uh, perform a security check. Security checks are crucial. It's understanding, you know, what the user did, what the user's role was before. Uh, but just take a take a look at the application. See if there's things like coupon printer. Um, get an idea how many, you know, toolbars are in the web browser. What components. Uh, but do a security check. Um, your organization should create a checklist for this. Uh, as really, this whole thing should be a checklist. But perform a security check on the system. Ensure the system is fully patched and updated. I think that goes on without, you know, needed to be said. But again, if you don't say it, it's not going to get done. Remove unneeded applications and install the needed applications. You don't need, you know, to leave Adobe CS suite on a computer that the user is not going to need Adobe CS. Um, the wipe the data from the old user account. Um, you don't want... You know, if it's coming from, you know, someone in IT, you don't want a bunch of Word documents or passwords being stored in a document somewhere and the new user instantly gaining access to that. So wipe data. Uh, depending on the old user's role, use a new hard drive. Uh, if it's the CEOs, if it's the HR directors, if it's someone in IT, to purchase a new SSD hard drive, you know, 100 bucks, uh, it really would be advantageous to consider putting that new hard drive in. Clean it up, uh, clean your keyboards, clean your mice, um, just make it look professional, make it look like you're happy this person's coming in or, you know, hey, you're getting, you know, it's not new, but you know, it's new to you. So make them feel that it is a new system. Don't give them something with dust on it or, you know, hair, just do your best to clean it off. Um, 
<coughs> oh, excuse me again. Tools like Microsoft Intune um, can streamline and automate parts of this process. There's a number of tools that Microsoft and even some other third parties offer in the automation of you know creating these applications, creating this plan. But at the end of the day, the most important thing, and one thing you're going to learn if you pay attention to my uh, feeds here on Fridays, is documentation is king. Uh, you need to have documentation for every process along the way. So let's start out simple. Take a little bit, take the week, um, you know, document your workstation process for new and refreshed workstations. If you have any questions on it, shoot me a message uh, right on the comments here on LinkedIn or on Facebook or wherever you see this video. Uh, thank you for watching and I will see everybody back here on Monday.